Hello everybody, welcome to Galvanic Software Recovery Unit training on the double air demand or the DAD new application session. My name is Teresa and I'm the Senior Portfolio Manager with Galvanic Applied Sciences. I'm going to start with a quick overview on software recovery units. More specifically, why air demand control is so important in the SRU plants. Then I will focus on the new patent application developed by Galvanic for the optimum air demand control strategy in the SRU plants. So the whole idea of any SRU or software recovery unit is to convert hydrogen sulfide or H2S during the class process to elemental sulfur. It is very important to convert as much H2S as possible to the elemental sulfur to make sure uh, there is an increased plant efficiency and also make sure that the environmental release sulfur compounds are minimized for the environmental protection purposes. In order to achieve the optimized results, the amount of the air or the oxygen that is added in the first step of the class reaction should be controlled and should be as accurate as possible so that at the end, a 2 to 1 ratio of the H2S to SO2, as highlighted here in the second step, can be maintained. It is usually more convenient to talk more based on the air demand rather than calculated from the ratio of the 2 to 1. Therefore, you hear people talking about the air demand more often in this industry. So if there is too much oxygen available in the first step of this reaction, then the air demand signal would be positive, which means that too much SO2 is produced, which is not good. If the amount of the oxygen is not enough, then the air demand signal would be negative and the SRU or the sulfur recovery efficiency would be lower than what is actually expected. So that's not cool either. The air control is typically done and this process is through two different ways. So it's either the feedback or the feed forward analysis. And that's the traditional way of doing it. That's how people are more used to it. This graph here shows the SRU efficiency loss versus the air demand signal. In an ideal case, the air demand is zero, as you see here in the center. But on the right side of this graph, you see that the air demand is positive. So that means, again, too much air is being added. On the left side, you see that the air demand is on the negative side. So that means more air is required to make a better reaction, to get a better efficiency. So now you see why it is extremely important to have a good way of controlling the air demand in the SRU plants. There are two ways to keep the control on how much air is actually going to this process. One way is to analyze the tail gas at the very end of the process. So letting everything to go through and finish and then at, and having a tail gas analyzer at the, at the end and after the last condenser and measuring so what is the air demand here. This is pretty accurate. However, the problem is that this is limited to the process lag time. So 30, 60 seconds, whatever it takes to get there to be analyzed. So if there is any upset condition due to changes, let's say upstream in the feed gas, for example, if the feed gas composition changes suddenly, then it takes time for this analyzer to receive that and actually calculate the air demand and then tell the plant, oh, by the way, this is how much air that is required upfront to be added to this, to this reaction. So that as you see, it is not possible to respond in a really good way or in a timely manner. So there is a delay there. Upstream, there are some analysis going on to find out how much air is required. There are several methods available for analyzing the feed gas composition. For example, some of the people use GC. That can provide an actually very good detailed analysis of all the spaces that are available in the gas stream. However, the problem is that it takes time, perhaps a few minutes, to do all those analyses. And that's not good because 
this easily exceeds the time that is required for a timely manner way of responding to the changes in upset condition. So that doesn't match. You probably have heard about other methods like the UV, IR, TDL, and many more for analyzing the stream gas or the feed gas. Those also exist, so, but they are either limited in terms of the potential interferences or some are matrix dependent or they might require some complex installations or some might have sensitive optical design for the feed gas, um, feed gas stream applications. So they are limited one way or the other. So, so far, if you put all this together, there is no actual complete solution in the market that can address all of the measurements with absolutely no limitations. So one way or the other, again, they might see some limitations for the measurements. So that definitely affects the, the degree of the accuracy that is expected from any of the measurements um, available in market as well. ABC or ABC Plus solutions designed by Jacobs Comprimo. In the ABC, combustion air to the SRU main burner is continuously adjusted. That's just to correct for the changes in the feed gas flow rate, for the pressure, for the temperature, for uh, anything going on. In the ABC Plus now, the design intent is to make sure that the actual air to the feed gas control ratio is based on online feed gas analysis. So again, the accuracy here would depend on the feed gas analysis as well. And the general feed gas limitation could impact here as well. Another way of looking at optimizing the air demand control in the SRU is using the DAD control strategy or the double air demand. DAD is a patent application by Galvani. This is to improve the air demand control in the SRU by placing a second analyzer downstream of the first clause condenser. And that basically means cutting the time delay to 10 to 20 seconds or less than that. This added loop is much faster just than the, compared to the typical TL gas loop that is uh, available in the class section. The resulting duration of the deviation from the optimal condition is critically less. It's, it's way, way less than the traditional methods. So therefore, that amount of the SO2 emission that can happen is much smaller if there is any upset situation. The absolute accuracy of the additional Erdman analyzer will also be less than the normal because what happens is that the final correction is still done by a tailgate analyzer as well. So in this system, what you have, as you can see here, there is an analyzer here right after the first condenser. There is one right after uh, the last condenser, like the tailgate analyzer. So you don't have two sitting there in this whole system together to make sure that you're doing one closer to the upstream, one closer to the end of the process, and you basically are controlling the uh, the whole feed and the whole back up end of the system, which is great to have them all in one package. Since this analyzer, the second analyzer is after the first condenser, and I say second because the first uh, is just a normal tailgate analyzer that already exists in lots of plants or uh, you're familiar with it. Since the analyzer is after the first condenser, uh, the results in the analysis do not depend on any complicated chemistry that is going on in the furnace or before the reaction furnace or it won't depend on any compositional changes in the feed gas. None of the limitations that I mentioned earlier about what technology can measure what, what limitation exists here, because everything again is happening after the reaction furnace, where, where the analyzer is, it doesn't even see what is going on in the furnace, which is great because a lot of problems and the limitations and the broad changes in the ask gas and all of that, because of those measurements on specific spaces, they, they, they have to face those limitations as well. But here is after the reaction furnace, and these are already taken care of. But still, the beauty of this is that this is very close enough to the upstream of the process, which is still very, very 
time the fish and then very fast if anything goes wrong in the upstream that can capture right away after the reaction furnace and you, and the analyzer and the whole control system deals with it rather than waiting all the way to get to the to the end side of the SRU plant. The 943 TGX analyzer of the Brimstone family, which is very popular analyzer for the tail gas, that's the one that is being used in this package as well. It's a UV-based analyzer. It can measure H2S, it can measure S2, COS, CS2, aerodynamics, all in one single unit. For the DAD, one analyzer, one exact 943 TGX will be installed after the first condenser and then one after the last condenser. So again, the main benefit that you are getting from your from this system is optimizing that H2S to SO2 ratio, the air demand control. And if anybody is interested, because we are measuring COS and CS2 as well, so that's a great way of controlling that catalyst conversion efficiency that is very important in some of the plants as well. So again, that package includes those as well. The output of the two analyzers then is communicated to a PLC that is part of this DAD package. Guess uh, takes the output of the analyzers and then it can do its own calculation and then it basically communicates all of what is required for the plant back to the plant control system. So the operators there know that what was happening after the first and last condenser and how to adjust the air valves uh, accordingly. So some of the typical questions that might be asked are like, so do we need a bigger probe? Or do we need a bigger heat exchanger? I don't know, do we need higher cooling capacity? And all sorts of questions. So the answer to all of these questions is no. In fact, the conditions uh, are more favorable upstream for the measurements. So despite higher sulfur vapor and the temperature, water vapor is less in the upstream. And less water quantum basically reduces the required cooling capacity for the sample probe. So in fact, the average cooling capacity is almost equal for both sample points. So we might just need to adjust the cooling airflow a little bit in the probe just to make sure that we lower down that temperature to get rid of the condensed sulfur vapor before going to the analyzer. But anything else is pretty much the same as a tail gas analyzer. So that's awesome if somebody is using a tail gas, they're familiar with that, so that's the same system, but after the first condenser. The tail gas analyzer, for example, the one after the last condenser goes offline, then the DAD analyzer, the other one after the first condenser, is still working, so that can still control the air demand. Nobody needs to do anything manually here. It's all covered in this package. The analyzer location and the accuracy, as I mentioned, right after the first condenser, but not having to deal with anything complicated in the reaction furnace is another big advantage and benefit that we get from this package. The sample system is very robust and can handle the upstream conditions very well. All right, so to test the system and uh, the performance of what we are offering here, these graphs are the result of a set of dynamic simulations to look into the dynamic behavior of our DAD system as well as the same setup for the ABC. They basically show the dynamic system responses and the performance parameters for the same disturbance is the um, effect of an upset causing an 18% change in the initial ratio of the H2S to oxygen in the process gas stream, which is maintained for a period of about 15 minutes. So as you see here, the left side, the left graph, show the result uh, for a class process, and then the right side is for the super class. As you see, after all this disturbance of that 18 person change of the ratio that I mentioned, so how is at the end of the day, how is the DAD actually performing and how much, how much that's the results of are affected? You see a very nice, steady and consistent behavior with a really low sulfur emission caused by those changes in the process gas stream. That means that this system, the DAD, is very robust in reading those results and it's not disturbed. You see the same behavior in the super class as well. And if you want to even get more idea, we've done another set of uh, simulations here. So this one specifically is for the actual sulfur emission again. 
as a percentage of a total sulfur feed, which is plotted as you see against time. So here again, the left side for the class, right side for the super class, there's some set of graphs. So that's basically the equivalent time of the additional emission that is caused by that disturbance I mentioned earlier. So this is plotted here. And time basically refers to the time that is required to obtain the extra SO2 emission when the plant is operating at optimal steady state conditions. So you can see here, for example, that the numbers are not there, but if you look at 100, so that should be around 80. So you can see a time at about like 80 seconds for the DAD system, uh, which means that five such disturbance, for example, during one day decreases the daily average recovery efficiency by about like just 0.005% for the DAD system. So that means that the system is so efficient and working that we don't have to worry about that huge disturbance or that huge effects on what is going on on the recovery efficiency at the end of the day. So these results, putting them all together, show clearly a very fast control strategy for the DAD, which means that the plant can run much more efficiently and can basically eliminate the chances of upsets, um, significant dips. So minimizing the chance of minimizing the recovery um, efficiency due to any compositional changes. So again, the whole idea is that by going through all of this and making changes in those initial ratio or composition, we wanted to see if we make those changes at the end of the day, whether DAD can act very fast and make the plan feel really like nothing happened and DAD takes care of it or no. And we see in all cases that no matter whether it's a class or super class, you see that the idea is really taking care of it. It's very nice and steady and stable in terms of the reactions um, to the changes happen. So here we discuss why the area demand control is so critical in the SRU plant and uh, how Galvanic's new DAD control strategy can offer a comprehensive and really accurate solution with a rapid return on investment to optimize the area demand control to increase the SRU online time and also to minimize the emissions specifically due to the process of sets, which is a big deal why people even want to control things up front and uh, or upstream in the SRU plants. So DAD provides a high measurement certainty and that's due to the 40 years of field proven experience for the brimstone and the whole SRU plants and applications in different areas. Please feel free to reach out if you have any question, if you need more materials to support, if you would like to discuss any application or opportunity in terms of a DAD further. I would like to thank you all for your attention and I look forward to discussing DAD with all of you further.